Hello, once again, this is Farm Mark Bequin, and we are continuing our lecture on malaria. Today, we'll be looking at the types of malaria and how it is treated. Malaria can be classified into two main uncomplicated or simple malaria and complicated or severe malaria. Let's take note. If simple malaria is not diagnosed early or there is ineffective treatment or treatment failure, it may progress to become severe malaria. It is important that when a patient comes to our pharmacy, we should be able to distinguish between which one is complicated and which one is uncomplicated. For the signs and symptoms of uncomplicated malaria, the most important one that we have to look out for is the presence of fever. Malaria is the commonest cause of fever in Ghana. The patient may also may have headaches, fatigue, and mask, uh, pain in the muscles. The patient normally may have chills, that is the feeling cold and sweating. Some patients may have shivering or rigors. Some may have nausea and vomiting. Now, with all these things that I've said, it is now mandatory for us to do a rapid diagnosis test for malaria. If the patient presents with these symptoms and the test result is positive, then we can see that the patient has gotten uncomplicated malaria. The classic symptom of malaria is cyclical, occurrence of sudden coldness followed by shivering or rigor, and then fever and sweating lasting four to six hours. Occurring every two days if it is Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale infections. While every three days for Plasmodium malaria. Now for Plasmodium fasparum, the commonest species of this parasite in Ghana can have recurrent fever every 36 to 48 hours or a less pronounced and almost continuous fever. Now, this is what we normally see when somebody gets malaria. Sometimes they feel well during the daytime. In the evening, they have fever, they have shivering. Then in the daytime, sometimes it goes on. That is classical of malaria. So when anybody comes to our pharmacy and is complaining they are not well in the evening, they have fever, they have headaches, but in the morning, they feel health, well and healthy. That's how the parasites sometimes behave. In treating malaria, the malaria parasite cycle is normally destroyed by taking drugs, which can act on the different stages of the plasmodium parasite. For example, some act in the stage where the parasites are in the red blood cells and they prevent them from getting the nutrients they need to grow, thereby killing them. Other drugs too act on the parasites at the stage where they break from the red blood cells. So every medicine has gotten a different mechanism of action. Now, a wide variety of anti-malaria drugs are available to treat malaria. In the last five years, treatment of plasmodium fasperum infections in endemic countries has trans been transformed by the use of combination drugs containing an atomicinin derivative. Severe malaria is treated with intravenous or intramuscular quinine or increasingly the atomicinin derivative atesinin. Now this is very important for us to note and tells us that we don't manage severe malaria in any pharmacy or landless chemical shop. It is referred immediately to a hospital for a prompt and effective treatment to given. The pharmacies normally handle simple or uncomplicated malaria. There are several drugs that are also available to prevent malaria in travelers to malaria endemic countries. We normally call this process prophylaxis. So prophylaxis means that medicines or measures that are taken to make sure that one doesn't get sick, okay? Now, resistance has developed to several of these anti-malaria drugs that were used, and most notably was chloroquine. Even though we are now seeing and heard that hydroxychloroquine and other forms of chloroquine are going to be quite effective in the treatment of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we are currently having. For malaria, chloroquine has been outmoded because 
the plasmodium parasite develop resistance to the chloroquine molecule. In treating of uncomplicated malaria in a pharmacy, there are three main key principles that we have to do. One is it should be treated promptly. Promptly means that once we diagnose it as malaria, we give the first dose of the medicine at the pharmacy. It is vital for us to start within 24 hours of the onset of the symptoms to prevent progression to severe or complicated malaria or even death, especially in children. The treatment should also be effective. I know some of us like to use herbal medicine, neem trees, we want to use other medicines to, to treat malaria, but it has been seen that the most effective medicines are the ACTs. So it should be treated immediately. The medicine should be effective. You should use an ACT. You cannot use any other medicine than an ACT. Some of us will prefer to give some herbal medicines. I don't want to mention name. We know it. Various herbal medicine advertised. They are not more effective than the antimalarials. And the treatment should be appropriate. The treatment should be appropriate. We give the right dose for the right duration of time. A strong healthcare system will provide for reliable diagnosis. And this is very important. A lot of conditions may resemble malaria, like meningitis, typhoid fever, etc. In children, they can have an ear infection, urinary tract infection. It could also resemble malaria. So a reliable diagnosis is very important as the basis for optimal treatment. However, in most malaria endemic areas, access to curative and diagnosis services is limited. Sometimes you may not have the rapid test kits. The home management of malaria, that's what they, what's the meaning of HMM, home management of malaria. Strategy recognizes the importance and seeks to improve the effectiveness of self-medication practices, especially in countries like ours where we may not always have the RDT. Then we can initiate treatment before the patient refers to the hospital. Monotherapy, that is using one medicine to treat malaria, like what was done in the past with chloroquine and pyrimetamine, will normally result in drug resistance whereby they are no more working. The World Health Organization, who now recommends that we should use a combination therapy where we are using more than one medicine in treating uncomplicated malaria. Now, why is WHO asking us to do this? The rationale is that anti-malaria combination therapy is the simultaneous use of two or more medicines with independent modes of action and thus different biochemical targets in the parasite. The rationale is in twofold. One, the combination is often more effective and in the very rare event that a mutant parasite resistant to one of the medicines arises de novo during the course of the infection, this resistant parasite will be killed by other anti-malaria medicines. So we use two guns. If the parasite decides to serve one of the, the, the ammunitions you are using, we are sure the other one will hit it. So it's compulsory we always give a combination medicine, at least with two medicines. Now, this mutual protection is thought to prevent or delay the emergence of resistance, where the plasmodium parasite cannot develop resistance to the medicine, which means that if you take the medicine, they, it can't kill the parasites and you still have the malaria. And that's why we say to delay the emergence of the resistance. Now, to realize the two advantages, the partner medicine in a combination must independently be sufficient and efficacious in treating malaria. And this one brings us to the now well used medicine called the atomicinin based combination therapy, simply called the ACTs. And the ACTs contains an atomicinin derivative that could be atestinate, atomita, or dihydroatomicinin. And these medicines produce rapid clearance as they kill the parasite, the plasmodium parasite, very fast. And also, they provide rapid resolution of symptoms. That is, the patient feel better quickly when they give an ACT. And because atomicity and its derivatives have gotten a problem, that is, they are eliminated from our body very quickly. If you give it alone, these medicines may not stay. So it is important we add another medicine that will be able to provide a long duration of treatment with that amazing family. And this can reduce the treatment duration to even three days and can provide a lot of 
um, um, protection for our patient. So the partner drugs needs to be relatively slowly eliminated, which is it stays in the, in the body for a longer time, giving an advantage of protecting the atomicin directive for the patient. Now, how is malaria treated in Ghana? Now, the first medicine that has been recommended for us to use in treating uncomplicated malaria for all age groups, for babies up to adults, is the atesinate plus amodiaquin. Normally, we say atesinate amodiaquin. The only group of people that we don't give them this medicine is pregnant women in their first trimester and also patients that are just speedy deficient people or the glucose phosphatase dihydrogenase deficient people. Now, these people cannot metabolize sulfur. So, any medicine that we think that may contain sulfur, when we give it to them, they may react and the resultant effect may be very fatal to their life. So, we don't give it to GTSPD people and pregnant women in their first trimester. Now, if a patient cannot tolerate atestinate and amodiaquine, we come to a second line treatment for uncomplicated malaria. And that can also be used for all age group. It's very popularly used in this country. And that's the Atamita and Lumifantrin. Atamita and Lumifantrin. This can also be given in pregnant women in their first trimester because it may pose a risk to the fetus. So we don't give it to pregnant women in their first trimester. However, patient that's uh, just a speedy patient can take it. So relatively, you can see Atamita and Lumifantrin may be safer to use than attestinates and modiaquine because of the broad spectrum that you may have for the various groups of people that will be using it. Now we have a third line that was recommended. It's not on this slide, but that one is dihydroatomicinin piparaquine. And this medicine normally is not being prescribed. But majority of the cases in the pharmacy you may see doctors prescribing atemita plus lumifantrin. The third line treatment for severe and complicated malaria in Ghana is quinine. Okay, we have the oral quinine phosphates where the patients are not vomiting can be given. However, where the patient is vomiting, we give the injection through the IV quinine. Okay, and these medicines are not dispensed without prescriptions. It is not used to treat uncomplicated malaria. So strictly, it is prescribed by a medical doctor for us to dispense at a pharmacy where they need it. Now, I said earlier on that pregnant women in their first trimester cannot use atensinate amodiaquine or atemita lumifantrine. So, if they have it, what do we do? Now, the treatment is quinine phosphate. Okay, they give them oral quinine phosphate, taking a 600 milligram three times a day for seven days. For treating malaria in the first trimester of pregnancy. Now, after the first trimester of their pregnancy, we can give them either the atesinate amodiaquine or the atomita lumifantrine. Okay, that's after the first trimester it can be given. This it can be given, but not before the first trimester. We don't give them. In preventing malaria also, we use a medicine called the sulfadoxin pyrimetamine. Sulfadoxin pyrimetamine, popularly called the SP. Okay, so this is what we give to pregnant women after their 16 weeks of gestation where the baby have quickened and they can feel movement, then we give them the SP to protect them from getting malaria. Use of antipyretics. And the antipyretics are medicine that normally are used to reduce fever. Okay, antipyretics. Pyrexia means fever. All right, so fever is a cardinal feature of malaria and it is very important that we manage it. If not, it can lead to convulsions in children. So normally we want to manage it's, and we can use medicines like paracetamol to manage it. And the doses have been discussed earlier on in our lectures. We know the dose. And ibuprofen can also be given. It can also reduce the fever. So if the child is not able to take it, we can give the suppository paracetamol. All right. So it is important that we use antipyretics to reduce, especially fever, where we prevent the child from developing other complications, especially convulsions and seizures. Sometimes some people may want to use medicines we call anti-emetics. Anti-emetics are medicines that stops vomiting. However, vomiting is very common in acute and malaria and may be severe. 
Antiemetics are widely used. However, there have been no studies of their efficacy in patients with malaria and no comparison between different antiemetic compounds. There is no evidence that they are harmful, though they can max severe malaria. So for us, we see let's not give it. Because the patient is getting complicated or severe malaria and you are giving an anti-emetic, okay, a medicine that will stop them from vomiting, like promethazin or domperidone, motilium, and they are not vomiting. It could be something that a doctor may think that is not severe malaria and can lead to complication. So normally we say let's stay up, let's not give any patient an anti-emetic because it may max the signs of severe malaria. A patient that vomits everything, including medicine, should be managed as severe malaria. If they are vomiting, whatever they eat or take medicine, they are vomiting, we manage them as severe malaria. And here, they have to be taken to the hospital where intravenous fluids will be given. Now, let's look deeper into the medicines we use to treat uncomplicated malaria. And the first one is the atestinate amodiaquin. And as said, it's the drug of choice in treating uncomplicated malaria in Ghana. Resistance is likely to worsen with continued ablavira amodiaquine monotherapy. So, they are, now it is out of the system, by the way. We can't give only amodiaquine. We give amodiaquine with a in it as a combination. The possible side effect of this medicine is normally headache, skin reaction. Some patients may have itching. Some may have some visual disturbance and gastrointestinal effects like nausea and vomiting. Let's closely look at the dose that is given in this table. So we have atestinate and amodiaquine. Now, now we have combined these two. Okay, so for infants, we take 25 milligram of atestinate on the first day and 75 milligram of amodiaquine for the first day. And they'll continue this dose for up to three days. So day number one, day number two, day number three is 25, 75. It's easy for you to memorize it. Okay, 25 plus 75, you're getting 100. 25 is the A, atestinate. Okay, the 75 is the AM, the amodiaquine. So basically, you can see for infants, it is 25 milligrams, 75 milligram atestinate amodiaquine, daily for three days. One to six years, six 50 milligrams atestinate and 150 milligram amodiaquine. You can see it is twice what the infants are taking, also daily for three days. Now, 7 to 13 is taking 100 milligrams, 300 milligrams daily, also for three days. And 14 years plus, that's for adults, take 200 milligrams at testing it and 600 milligrams of that daily for three days. Now, you can see these doses are big doses. So if you give all at once to a patient, some of them may feel very weak. So we are now recommending that the doses should be given in two divided doses, which means that instead of giving all the 100 milligrams or all the 50 milligrams or the 200 milligrams at once, we can divide 200 milligrams in two so that they take 100 milligrams in the morning then they take 100 milligram in the evening, okay, daily for three days. That's what we mean by divided doses. Now, atestinate amodiaquine should be taken with a heavy meal. Please take note. It should be taken with a heavy meal. The reason is that normally patients that take these medicines may have a reduced blood sugar. We call it hypoglycemia, all right? So if they don't have a lot of sugar in their blood, they may be, they feel very weak. And that's why some patients don't even want to take this medicine. So... Take note that when we are dispensing this medicine, we ask the patient to take the medicine with a heavy meal. With a heavy meal. The next medicine is Atamita Lumifantrin. For Atamita Lumifantrin, it is currently available as a fixed dose combination of formulation. Now, fixed dose means that these two medicines are inside one tablet. Normally comes as 20 mg Atamita and 120 mg Lumifantrin. The therapeutic dose, the recommended treatment is six regimen over a three-day period. And the dosing is based on the number of tablets per dose according to the predefined weight. Let's look at the table roughly. So you can see that uh, this medicine is quite interesting. For the first dose, notes that within a day, the patient is going to take the medicine three times. So at start, the time that they take the first dose, the, if it's an infant, the infant is taking one tablet, and one tablet contains 20 mg atamita, 120 mg lumefantrine. After that, eight hours after they have taken the first dose, they repeat the second dose, eight hours time, they take the same dose. 24 hours after they took the first dose, they take another one, 
then at the 36 hours one 48 hours one and 60 hours one. now let's look something interesting you can see that the number one the start dose the eight hours within 24 hours they are taking three dose this is called the loading dose it really helps for us to give treatment please we don't give at the metal mifantrin as one twice a day and some people are labeling it just like that okay that's quite a lazy work but the metal mifantrin is taken three times in a day for the first one and the three times has gotten a different dosing regimen you take the first dose eight hours take the second dose 24 hours you take the next dose then the rest is every 12 hours so you can see 36 48 and 60 hours let's take no it can be very tricky by simple so let's see if a patient take the first dose of the medicine at let's say 2 p.m the next dose of the medicine will be taken at 10 p.m okay 2 plus 8 you are getting 10 p.m now after 10 p.m the next 24 hours after the 2 p.m is going to be another 2 p.m so the 24 hours here is going to be 2 p.m after the 2 p.m the next dose will be taken at 2 a.m at 36 hours the next dose will be taken at 2 p.m and the last dose will be taken at 2 a.m so the only different thing that we are seeing here is the eight hours you can see the patient started the medicine for example at 2 p.m the next dose is taken at 10 p.m the next dose will be taken at the same time it is started that's 2 p.m then the next one will be 2 a.m 2 p.m 2 a.m let's take note of this and i'm advising that when you are labeling please write the time on the label don't write start eight hours 24 hours a patient wouldn't understand so the time they are supposed to take it and i'm advising they take the first dose in the pharmacy write the start time and do the rest of the time for them it's very simple when you understand it so the infants take 20 milligram 120 milligram as one dose one to six years take 40 milligram 240 7 to 13 years take 60 milligram and 360 and 80 milligram and 480 also it's important for us to know that using the age may be very deceptive so we recommend that sometimes we use the weight i have seen children that are maybe four years old and they are weighing around 25 kilograms if somebody's weighing four and they are weighing 25 kilograms we don't give them the dose of two we rather give them the dose of three because the weight will always uh, uh the weight is always used whereby there's a conflict between the age and the weight we rather go for the weight okay so let's take that one on. it's important that a termital mifantrin is always sticking with a fatty meal a meal of food with a lot of fat it helps its absorption and the medicine can be absorbed very well the advantage of this combination is that it's not available as a monotherapy absorbed very good with a fatty meal and they are flavored dispersible tablets okay we have some as coatem dispersable the lunar dispersable just put some one in a small amount of water it dissolves and the child can take it. and that's a very good advantage now in giving all this medicine it's important that we tell the patient to adhere to treatment okay if they don't adhere if they don't take the medicine as we have told them because at home nobody supervises them the disease will not be treated and once the disease is not treated it can lead to a lot of complication and two to achieve the desired therapeutic effects a medicine must be efficacious and it must be taking the correct doses at the proper intervals that we set if they change the time sometimes they are taking the medicine twice a day it wouldn't work i've seen people still running temperature because instead of taking the medicine the second dose at eight hours they decide to take it at another 12 hours and the medicine simply did not work okay if they're supposed to take it food and they decide not to take it food the medicine may not work so it is important that we educate the patient on how they are supposed to take the medicine. In taking anti-malarials, it's important we give them some supportive therapy. One is paracetamol for the fever and sometimes headache. If the temperature is still not dropping, it's advisable we do tepid sponging for children with high temperature. We ask them to drink a lot of fluids so that they don't become dehydrated. And we feed the child during the illness so that their blood sugar doesn't drop. If you give an ACT to any patient and they vomit within 30 minutes, we, shall, we are supposed to repeat it. However, if you repeat and the vomit is still persistent, let's note now it's possible 
the malaria has progressed from uncomplicated malaria to complicated malaria. So the child should quickly be taken to the hospital for the medical doctors to have a second opinion on how to treat the condition. When a patient has been given an ACT, this is counseling points are important. Tell the patient or the child's mother that the reason why you are giving her the drug. Some people believe that when they give the price and the fever goes down, they have treated the malaria. You are supposed to explain to them that the anti-malaria medicines are supposed to kill the plasmodium parasites in the blood. So they are supposed to finish the course and they are supposed to give the medicine at the time that it was stated to. Let's demonstrate how they are supposed to measure and give the correct dose. Some in a haste may not look at how the dose are measured and they will go home and give the child the wrong dose of the medicine. And then we ask you said, because we are supposed to treat it if promptly, always give the first oral dose under supervision, especially in children in the pharmacy. Okay, write the time for them because malaria can really cause a lot of problems in children when we delay in treatment. So the first dose should be give the, given in the pharmacy promptly. Now administer the medicine after meals, as we said, and the meal for ACTs, especially at a metal infantry, should be fatty. A and amodakun should just be a heavy meal. Now explain that tablets must be taken till the course of treatment is completed, even if the patient feels well, because we are treating the plasmodium parasite. If they don't take all, the patient may have another case of malaria. I advise patients to return immediately within the same day if symptoms are getting worse or get worse, especially if there are signs of severe disease that develops and later we look at complicated malaria and we understand. Now check that the patient or the mother has understood all the treatment advice before they leave the pharmacy. And how do we do that? Ask them the question. Ask them to repeat back what you told them. If the patient is able to tell you all that you've said, then it is believed they have understood. Never dispense antibiotics or anti-malaria medications to patients without asking them whether they have understood. Ask them to tell you all that you've said before they leave. Now, indicate and stress the timing on the label and when counseling respectively. Example, if the medicine is supposed to be taken 12 hourly or like the ACT, the time, please let's write a time on it. If you are given a suspension which shall be reconstituted at the pharmacy, please let's take note. It should be kept refrigerated and should be discarded any leftover after the completion of the prescribed course. If the medicines are not kept well, they may not work and that could really cause a lot of problem. Let's take note, as I've said earlier, refer if the client reports of no improvement after 24 hours. In fact, the ACTs will give a lot of res results in the first 24 hours after taking the patient is still not feeling warm, vomiting, there's fever, there's still headache, they're not feeling well. Please, let's refer them immediately to the hospital for further investigations to be done. Sometimes we could have something that we call malaria treatment failure. That is, after giving the medicine, the medicines may not work. It's managed at the hospital, and normally we use quinine in managing. Sometimes patients may take the ACT, it's just not working, and they may be given quinine. And the doses are there. This is not meant for us, but at least we are supposed to know because we work in a pharmacy. When we see a prescription of quinine, normally it could be that there had been a treatment failure, and that's why the doctor is prescribing for it. So it's a prescription medicine. Please let's take note. Now let's discuss something more on severe or complicated malaria. Now, severe malaria is also known as complicated malaria. Delayed diagnosis and inappropriate treatment of uncomplicated malaria, especially in infants and children, can lead to the rapid development of severe malaria. Now, severe malaria mostly occurs in children under 5 years of age, pregnant women, and people that are not immune, like HIV patients and people coming from less endemic area to a more endemic area like Ghana. So children below 5 are at risk of severe malaria, pregnant women, especially those who are having their first pregnancy, the primi gravidia, travelers from areas with little or no malaria, and previous residents of a malaria endemic area such as Ghana who passed more than six months in a non-endemic area like US or UK, then return to Ghana. They normally will lose their immunity. So when they come, these patients are treated as risk group, patient with sickle cell anemia, and also patient with HIV 
case infection. Please let's note in Ghana, with the exception of the pregnant women, we don't give chemoprophylaxis, we don't give medicines for this group of people. They are supposed to stay in indoors, prevent a bite, and sleep under insecticide treated nets. These are some of the few signs of complicated malaria. And the first and most important sign is where there is high fever, okay, or temperature over 39 degrees Celsius. And this one may come along with dark colored urine, drowsiness or coma, jaundice, the patient not able to support him or herself. There's persistent or profuse vomiting. That is very key. Persistent or profuse vomiting. The patient may have anemia and poor urine output. They are not able to urinate well. If any patient comes to a pharmacy with these conditions, please let us refer them to the hospital immediately. For children, it may be difficult for us to just send them because if you are not careful, it can lead to a lot of complications. But there's something we call a pre-referral treatment. Severe malaria is a medical emergency which requires referral to the nearest health facility because the risk of death or its complication are highest within the first 24 hours of the onset of the disease, especially as I've said, in children under five years. An appropriate start dose of rectal artesanates and supportive care should be administered and the person referred immediately to the hospital. So when you have a child coming to your pharmacy and you believe that you gave a treatment and it wasn't working, the child is running temperature, the child is vomiting, we don't just ask them to take the child to the hospital. We are supposed to give a pre-referral treatment before they go. So let's look at some of the medicine that is recommended. And the first medicine and most important is rectal artesanate. It's given as a start dose. If the child is between 0 to 12 months or we give 50 milligrams insert into the anus through into the rectum, the child is between one a year and a month up to three years and a half. We give 100 milligrams. The child is between three and a half years to up to five years old. We give 200 milligrams and supposed to immediately. And afterwards, we can add some supportive care. We add tablet sponging. Okay, we ask the mother to avoid overclosing. We give pristomal suppository to also reduce the fever down more. Encourage a client to drink or breastfeed to prevent and or correct dehydration. You encourage a client to feed or breastfeed, okay, to, to prevent and also to manage what they call hypoglycemia, that's low blood sugar. So they are feeding to correct two things, dehydration and hypoglycemia. Then the patient is referred immediately, stating what actions have been done. So when you're asking them to go to the hospital, just write a note. If you have a pharmacist, they should sign that this is what has been done so that the doctors will know where to take it from. In pregnant women, malaria can really cause a lot of problems, including anemia, miscarriages, stillbirth, underweight babies, and maternal death. So normally, when somebody comes to your pharmacy and they are pregnant and you suspect they have malaria, please let's refer them immediately to the hospital. We don't treat it in the pharmacy. Okay, normally they are in their first trimester. The doctor may give quinine, 600 milligrams, three times a day for seven days. If they are after their first trimester, the doctor may prescribe an ACT to be treated. However, it is best that malaria is rather prevented in pregnant women. So there's a medicine called sulfadoxin pyrimetamin, SP, which is given by directly observed therapy. Directly observed therapy means that the midwife at the hospital or the clinician should give the medicine to the pregnant woman, see them swallowing it, let them wait for some time and document it in their folder. It's not given for the patient to bring this medicine home to take, okay? And that strategy is called the DOT, the directly observed therapy, DOT. And it's given under a regimen called an IPT, intermittent preventive therapy which means if they take it they have some time before they take the next dose okay so that's the meaning of the ipt and i'll explain in further details so ipt means that when a pregnant woman comes to an antenatal clinic in their second trimester after quickening where the baby has moved or after 16 weeks of gestation she's given three tablets of sulfadoxin pyrimetamine one is 500 milligram 25 milligram and the first dose. Now the second dose is taken exactly one month after the first dose. So we are in March. 
and the patient took the medicine in March. Today is 25th March. The next medicine will be taken around 25th April. Okay, so the second dose is taken the one month after the first dose has been given. And the third dose is taken one month after the second dose has been given. That's the final dose. So March, that means that the next dose is taken in April, then the last dose will be taken in May. All right, and this one helps to protect the pregnant woman from getting malaria, but should be done before the 36 weeks of gestation where they are ready to deliver. Now, before we end, let's discuss something about the rapid diagnosis test for malaria. It is now compulsory for us to test before we treat when we think we are treating uncomplicated malaria. All right, so this is a sample of the test and I'll be showing a video shortly. What we are seeing here is called the buffer. What we see here is called the micropipette and this is the test kit. So we add a small amount of the blood to the sample. So you can see the blood is being added here. We add, depending on the type of manufacturer test kits you are using, between two to four drops. Then we wait for about 20 minutes to read the results. Now, in taking doing this test, it's very important that it should be on the flat surface. It should not be under fan or in air conditioned room because it can dry very quickly. Then we wait for 20 minutes before we read. Now, if there's only one line on the C, okay, normally the test case I've gotten C and T, C for control, T for test. If there's only one line on the C, it means the test is negative. If there are two lines, one on the T and one on the C, it means it is positive. It means it is positive. Some test states can be used for other types of plasmodium parasite, but for now, we'll concentrate here. So this is what I was talking about, the C for control, the T for test, the A for the acetate, um, the A for the sample, and the B for where the buffer will be, will be placed here. It's important for us to know this malaria test kit is for PF, Plasmodium Falsperium, and as I've said, the common one that we have in Ghana. So please let's ensure that anytime you buy a test kit, it can be able to detect Plasmodium Falsperium. Plasmodium fasperium. Let's take a look at how this test will look. Now, if you have positive, we should have the two lines. The test is invalid where the C line didn't come. You can see all this one, the C line didn't come. The positive one, you saw that the C lines were there. That's the control line. If the control line is not there, the test is invalid. Or you had a red line at any other place than the C, the test is invalid. All right, so to make sure that the test is always correct, let's check. If nothing came at all, it is invalid. If it came on a wrong place, invalid. All right. Now let's watch how this test is done in this short clip. So in this short clip, we can see that there's a child. The hand was clean. What the lady is holding is called a lancet. It is pricked. Then we have a small amount of the blood. Now the clinician is using a micro pipette. That's what she's using to take a small amount of the blood. After the small amount of the blood is taken, she places straight onto the test kits. All right, straight there onto the test kit, wipes the blood that is it's, it's bleeding. Then add the acetate buffer. So she shortly she'll be adding the acetate buffer so that it will start to read. Okay, that's the buffer she's holding. Okay, this one is very simple. She put the number of drops recommended there. Then after doing that, it's on the flat surface, she has to wait. Now, please take note. In doing this, step, let's be very careful that you wear gloves, okay? And the last set and everything is well disposed because it contains blood. A patient may have hepatitis B or any other infection. So in doing it, be careful that you don't get an infection from it. Then we wait for some time before the test is spread. If for the 20 minutes you have to do for another patient, please make sure that you label the first one that you have done with the name of the patient and that will be able to help you so the mother will wait for 20 minutes for the reading to be got to see whether it is negative or whether it is positive now this is the end of our presentation there are some questions i have for you please answer it when you finish you can discuss on the platform or you can send it to my inbox I know you all know my email address, markbequin4 at yahoo.com. Markbequin4 at yahoo.com. You should all know my email address. You can send it there. Okay, solve these simple case studies. If you have any issue, let me know. 
So this is one of them, okay? You can pause the video, then write it, okay? Then after, you can WhatsApp me your answers on my personal WhatsApp number. My number is 0244 All right. This is another one. What is the main symptom of malaria? By now, you should know all this. So, this is the end of our lecture on malaria. Thank you very much for listening to the lecture. And I hope you have learned a lot. Please be safe in this environment. Stay home. Wash your hands, use hand sanitizers, stay home, okay? And I think together we can fight this COVID-19. God bless you. Thank you very much.